wherever I go, if I go up far north Queensland, we're going up in June uh, to do a trip through the Cape with some good old friends and we'll have fishing rods and the blood pressure just drops, Paul. It just all just settles down and... Mate, I, I love my country and I love being able to go fishing wherever I get a chance. That's it, man. Let's talk about the album, The World Today. Um, came out last week, available now, of course, in uh, all of the streaming places. Buy it old school. Get more information on Troy's website and thanks to our good mates at Sony Music. First studio album in a while and uh, lots of chats you've been having about it. It's a, a pretty personal one, particularly um, the stuff about your dad. Um, how many drafts does it take to, to nail a song about dad? I've got to say, Paul, it took it took a while. Uh, it was a, it was a shock to lose my father the way we did. I mean, when someone takes their own life, uh, I think that to me it, it sort of it weighed very very heavily on me for quite a while, thinking I could have done things differently or or tried to be there a bit more for him. But he was very sick and he was very depressed. And I think um, when people do things on their own terms, there's a lot to be respected about that as well. So it took a lot of drafts. Um, getting things together for to, to talk about dad and also to talk about the way life had, had been, you know, pre and post COVID as well, you know, I mean, it tested a lot of people's metal out, mate, and tested my marriage out. It um, it tested a lot of things. My wife was very happy for me to go away for the two weeks to Sydney <laughs> to record this record, and she was also very happy for me to do two weeks isolation in Brisbane when I got home. Yeah, yeah you can do an extra week just to make sure that he doesn't have the Adelaide pizza strain. You know, just three she... weeks though. I've got to give it to her, though. I mean, for the for the Barneys that we had, mate, she was still dropping off lasagna and risotto for me, so I've got to give it to her. She's a great girl. Very good. Sounds like a very normal relationship, mate, where part of true love is knowing there'll be a significant amount of time. You're maybe not the best of friends, but... Uh, exactly. Yeah. But, but also, like, like, when you go back and you try to examine artistically... Um, something like dad, something like your relationship. Do you learn things about yourself or is it just um, an expression of what you already knew? Look, I think I did learn a lot about myself. No one's ever been through something like COVID before. No, no not a lot of musicians have. And I think, first of all, when your purpose is gone, you have to reassess everything. You reassess the fact that you're going to be home and not travelling and you're going to be in your wife's pocket and under her toes quite a bit. And then you have to actually get to the point where you get motivated uh, to do something. So I think I got to know myself a lot more, especially with the writing of this particular record. And also, mate, I think I wanted to use music as a tool like I did when I was a kid. I used to hide in it when my mum and dad broke up when I was a little fella. Uh, I, I tended to hide in music a little bit. I didn't think at 50 years old that I'd be looking for that little place to hide again. But it, it was a saviour again. And I got a chance to write some songs. And I, I really say to people, this is nowhere near the normal record they would expect from me. But there's a lot of uh, little rays of light to get you out of some interesting spots. Is it true you've got an old EH, an old EH Holden? And did you have one back when you were at Coffs? Yes, I did have. I've, I've had four. And I've been a madman. And, and, and this is what I read on the plane, Paul, and you might sympathise with this, but this is a... Oh, uh, unique cars. That's the Bible. Cars. Well done. And I've, I've circled an EH in there. Not that I need another one, <laughs> but I do I do love, uh, you know, seeing what condition they're in. This whole thing the other day, I walked out, hadn't been started in two weeks because I've been pretty busy, and I service it myself. I drop the oil out and change the filters and the plugs and stuff, and uh, the last time I went out there and started her up, oh, I just got that little spring next to that that Stromberg carby and gave it a bit of a flick, and it took me back to being a teenager again. I couldn't afford to get a car like a Commodore when I was in the 80s, and I couldn't. That was just my life. I was a bum muso, so I needed a car I could service and get me to gigs. And the EH now has become so iconic. But what it is to me, it's a bit of a trip back to my youth, mate. Uh, to smell the petrol, to get in there and smell the vinyl to feel like uh, you, you, you're back to when you're in simpler times in your life is really important. That's proof, mate. I've got my unique cars there as well. I'm not See? mucking around here. Brothers and cars and... Uh, can we get free subscriptions now, by the way? We're by, I'm you know, sure we can organise something. I yeah. mean, I buy it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. you got two blokes. When was the last time two people on National Telly held up Unique Cars magazine? Anyway, <laughs> Troy, uh, the album, <laughs> The World Today. I want people to get it. So awesome to talk to you, man. Can't wait to hear you perform a bit later. Thanks for the chat. Oh, it's awesome, mate. Great to catch up with you, Paul. And uh, like I say, these, these are real stories and they got me out of a lot of trouble in COVID and I hope they enjoy them.